Hi, everyone. Welcome to Plar Academy. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and leave a positive comment. Your support and encouragement motivate me to create more great videos. I divide the topics in Unit 1, Mechanics and Materials as as follows, like this. And all the topics are covered by following the syllabus of the Physics International A level for Edexcel, as shown here. In this video, I've covered all of Topic 1, Mechanics, focusing on motion and the subtopics of Velocity, Newton's Laws of Motion. Newton's Laws of Motion Newton's first law state that a body will remain at rest or move with constant velocity unless acted on by a resultant force. So, we can conclude that if no resultant force, so no acceleration, causing the object to be rest or constant velocity. Newton's first law is often called the law of inertia. The inertia of an object is measured by its mass. Mass or inertia is the property of an object that resists change in motion. Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second laws of motion state that a resultant force acting on a body will cause a change in velocity or the acceleration in the direction of the force. So the resultant force, F, is directly proportional to acceleration, A. We can conclude that if the resultant force is not zero, causing the velocity to change and the object will be accelerated or decelerated. So, the formula of the resultant force is F equals mass times acceleration or sigma f equals m a. The resultant force is the vector sum of all the forces on an object. Sigma is the symbol for the sum of, but you'll often see resultant force as just f. Remember that. The resultant force is the vector sum of all the forces. The force is always measured in newtons. The mass is always measured in kilograms and is a constant. The acceleration is always in the same direction as the resultant force and is measured in meters per second squared. If the resultant force equals zero, you can see sigma equals m a that this matches with Newton's first law, no resultant force means no acceleration. Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law of motion state that if a body exerts a force on body B then body B will exert a force on body A of equal magnitude but in the opposite direction. So, we can conclude that a pair of forces in Newton's third law must be equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, act on different bodies, and same type of forces, mass and weight. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter in an object at rest that resisting its movement. Mass is a scalar quantity and its unit is kilograms. So, the greater an object's mass, the greater its resistance to a change in velocity. Weight is a gravitational force on an object that has mass. Weight is a vector quantity and its unit is newtons. We calculate the weight of the mass by the equation W equals m g. Weight varies anywhere in the universe due to the gravitational field strength. Mass is constant anywhere in the universe. Work example 1. A small pebble of mass 500 grams is attached to the lower end of a light string. A. Find the tension in the string when the pebble is moving upwards with an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. We convert the mass in grams into kilograms by dividing 500 with 1000, we get mass equals 0.5 kilograms. The free body diagram of the pebble, there are weight to act down and the tension acting upward. From the equation, F equals M A. F is the resultant force to act on the pebble upward due to it moves upward. So, F equals T minus W equals M A. Substituting W equals 0.5 times 9.81, M equals 0.5 and A equals 2. We solve the tension T to get T equals 5.9 newtons for two significant figures. B. Find the tension in the string when the pebble is moving downwards with an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. From the equation, F equals M A. F is the resultant force to act on the pebble downward due to it moves downward. So, F equals W minus T equals M A. Substituting W equals 0.5 times 9.81, M equals 0.5 and A 
equals 3. We solve the tension T to get T equals 3 point for Newtons for two significant figures. C. Find the tension in the string when the pebble is moving downwards at a constant speed of 5 meters per second. From the equation, F equals MA. F is the resultant force to act on the pebble, it is zero due to constant speed and its acceleration is zero. So, W minus T equals zero. And then W equals T equals 0 0.5 times 9.81. We get the tension T equals for 0.9 newtons for two significant figures. D. Find the tension in the string when the pebble is moving downward with a deceleration of 4 meters per second squared. From the equation, F equals MA. F is the resultant force to act on the pebble downward due to it moves downward. So, F equals W minus T equals MA. Substituting W equals 0 0.5 times 9.81, M equals 0 0.5 and A equals negative for due to deceleration. We solve the tension T to get T equals 6.9 newtons for two significant figures. Work example 2. P and Q of masses 2 kg and 3 kg are attached to the ends of a light inextensible string that passes over a smooth pulley. The system is released from rest. A. Find the acceleration of each mass. The free body diagram of P, there are weight 2, G, to act down and the tension T acting upward. G is the acceleration of free fall, which is 9.81 m per second squared. The free body diagram of Q, there are weight 3, g, to act down and the tension t acting upward. The tensions t act on p and q are the same due to same tension in same string. The mass q moves downward and mass p moves upward with same acceleration, a, because mass of q is more than mass of p. This causes the acceleration of q downward and the acceleration of p upward. We write the equation of motion for p and q from the equation, f equals ma. The resultant force F on P is upward due to its acceleration upward. The equation of motion of P is T minus 2G equals 2A. The resultant force F on Q is downward due to its acceleration downward. The equation of motion of Q is 3G minus T equals 3A. We add two equations together, so we get G equals 5A. We solve the acceleration, A, by subtracting G equals 9.81. We get the acceleration, A, equals 2.0 meters per second squared for two significant figures. B, find the tension in the string. We substitute the acceleration, A, into the equation of motion of P or Q. So, I use the equation of motion of P. Substituting, A, equals 1.962 and G equals 9.81. We get the tension T equals 24 newtons for two significant figures. C. Find the force exerted on the pulley. Two tension T act on the pulley downward, like this. So, the resultant force exerts on the pulley downward with magnitude 2, T. Substituting T equals 23.5 for 4 newtons. We get the resultant force, F, equals 47 newtons for two significant figures. D. Find the distance moved by Q in the first for seconds. We calculate the distance using the kinematic equations due to constant acceleration. We use the positive sign to indicate downward direction. When Q moves downward, the displacement, S, need to be find, the initial velocity, U, equals zero, the final velocity, A, V, is unknown, the acceleration, A, equals 1.962 and time, T, equals 4. We use the equation S equals U, T, plus half of A, T squared. Substituting U equals 0, T equals 4, A equals 1.962. We get the distance equals 16 meters for two significant figures. Exam style question 1. The luge is an event at the Winter Olympics. An athlete lies on a small sledge and races down an icy track, feet first. A. An athlete accelerates down a straight section of the track as shown. The track is at an angle, theta, to the horizontal. 
draw a free body force diagram for the sledge and athlete. You should consider the relative sizes of the forces when drawing your diagram. Draw the athlete's weight W acting downward, like this. Draw the normal reaction R acting the athlete, like this. Draw the frictional force F acting the athlete upward the slope, like this. You get for marks from. Correct the weight. Correct the normal reaction force. Correct the frictional force. Length of W is more than R, and R is more than F. B. The mass of the athlete is one of the factors that affects her time to complete the race. 1. Explain why the mass of the athlete has little effect on the initial acceleration. At the initial, the frictional force is zero due to know the athlete's velocity. So, the athlete will accelerate downward the slope, like this. We separate the components of weight down the slope and perpendicular to slope, like this. This angle is theta. So, the component of weight down the slope is m g sine theta. The perpendicular weight's component is m g cos theta. Since, the resultant force, sigma f equals m a. Sigma f equals m g sine theta. The masses m are cancelled out, like this. So, we get the acceleration a equals g sine theta. So, we can explain that. Initially, the frictional force is equal to zero because the athlete has no velocity. Therefore, m g sine theta equals m a, and the masses m cancel each other out. This means the initial acceleration a equals g sine theta, which shows that a is independent of mass. You get three marks from. The initial friction equals zero. C m g sine theta. C m g sine theta equals m a and the masses cancel. Two, explain, in terms of forces, why the athlete reaches a maximum velocity. As the athlete's velocity increases, the air resistance also increases, causing the resultant force to decrease. When the air resistance becomes equal in magnitude to the component of the athlete's weight acting down the slope, the resultant force becomes zero, and therefore there is no acceleration. This results in the athlete reaching a constant maximum velocity. You get three marks from. As velocity increases, air resistance increases. Until frictional force equals component of weight down slope. Resultant force equals zero and no acceleration. 3. It is stated that the maximum speed is greater for athletes of greater mass. Suggest why this is only correct up to a certain mass. If the athlete's mass increases, their body might have a greater volume. This could lead to an increased surface area, which would then cause the air resistance to increase. You get two marks from. A larger person or mass would have a larger area or volume. The air resistance will be increased. C. After the finish line there is a straight, uphill section of track for the sledge to decelerate in. The maximum permitted gradient of this section is 20%. 1. Show that a track with a gradient of 20% is at an angle to the horizontal of about 11%. We give the horizontal distance to be x. And the vertical height is 20% of x, which is 0.2x. This angle is theta. So, we get the tan, theta, equals 0.2x divided by x. And x cancel each other out. So, theta equals 11 degrees for two significant figures. You get one marks for correct answer. Two, an athlete reaches the finish line at a velocity of 33 meters per second. She then applies a minimum braking force of 240 newtons as she moves along the uphill section of track to help her come to a stop. Calculate the minimum uphill length of track L that should be available for braking. You should ignore all frictional forces other than those applied by the athlete. Mass of sledge and athlete equals 95 kilograms. There are the force to act the athlete down slope as the component of weight and braking force. So, the resultant force act downward on the athlete to be m g sine theta plus 240. We calculate the deceleration a first from the resultant force, sigma f equals m a. 
substituting sigma f equals m g sine theta plus 240. Substituting m as 95 kilograms and g as 9.81. We solve the deceleration a as 4.485 meters per second squared. This motion is uniform acceleration, so we can apply the kinematic equations. We know the displacement s equals l, initial velocity u equals 33 meters per second, final velocity equals 0 meters per second, and acceleration a equals negative for point for for 85 meters per second squared due to deceleration. We use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2 a s. Substituting all values in the equation, like this. We get the distance L equals 120 meters for two significant figures. You get the five marks from. Use trigonometry to determine the component of weight. Use the resultant force equals m g sine 11.3 plus 240. Use sigma f equals m a to determine a. Use v squared equals u squared plus 2 a s to determine l. Get L equals 120 meters. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would be grateful if you would subscribe, share, like and leave a positive comment. Your support will encourage me to create more content. Thank you.